Hello everybody and welcome to the Crafty Planty Life. My name is Vanessa and this is going to be a knitting episode. So I have one acquisition for you, a couple of whips, a couple of uh, finished objects. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with acquisition because this will kind of lead me into where we were last weekend. <laughs> so we went to Salt Lake City, Utah last weekend and my husband ran a marathon there on Saturday. We got to explore the city. We were only like in you know we drove friday we're there all day saturday and then came back sunday so we weren't there that long but from what i saw of the city i really liked it it was a really nice uh, city it was surrounded by mountains i had never been to salt lake city so it was like a seven hour drive from where we live um the drive there was pretty terrible <laughs> it was wyoming was windy snowy icy terrible <laughs> terrible drive the weather was horrible um, I like Wyoming. I actually like the, the state of Wyoming in terms of um, the landscape and kind of nature, all of that stuff. I, I really like Wyoming. I like Laramie. It's a little college town. So we drove through Wyoming, which was a lot of, you know, the population is very sparse in Wyoming. So there wasn't a whole lot um, of cities <laughs> on the way there. But there's a lot of um, actually really pretty landscape. And then we got into Utah and... Um, we spend Saturday, since my husband was running the marathon Saturday, we spent Saturday kind of, Amelia and I spent it kind of exploring the city. We went to a local yarn shop. We went to an art store. So we kind of drove around. Um, I really like it. I would actually go back to Salt Lake City and spend some more time there. It's it's really interesting city. And um, that kind of leads me to my acquisition. So I try to go to a yarn shop every time we travel somewhere, especially a new state that we've never been to as a family before. And we went to Blazing Needles, which was the name of the yarn shop in Salt Lake City. And they had a, a lot of uh, variety there. I'm trying to think. They had kind of the more, I can't think of any of the names off the top of my head now, but you can go to the website and check it out. They had like Shibui Knits. Um, they had some Labi Anime, <laughs> which uh, I will show you in a minute. I got some of that. They had some other yarns that I can't think of right now, but they had a good selection of yarns um, in terms of like more, you know, super wash. Oh, they had Malabrigo or was it Mad No, they had Madeline Tosh, not Malabrigo. They had Madeline Tosh. Um, so they had a quite a variety of, of different yarns and notions and all kinds of stuff, candles um, there. So it was a cute little shop. They had a little knit group when, I, when we went, but I decided to go for this. So this is La Bien Aime in the Cori Confetti, and it's 50% Falkland Corydale, 30% natural recycled fibers, and then 20% um, recycled threads. So basically all of these little blips in there is some of the kind of the leftovers from some of their other yarns that they just kind of put in this yarn. So it's a really fun yarn. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. I think it's a either a worsted or a heavy decay but yeah I bought this and again you can see the speckles I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it I know people are gonna say probably a hat <laughs> but I don't wear hats even though I've shown you my finished object is a hat but I typically don't wear I have like five or six hats for myself and I only wear them when we go on walks in the winter time that's basically the only time I wear them. I don't actually wear them out because they squish my 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 curls. <laughs> so I don't wear them out. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't want to make a hat out of this. It's too pretty to make a hat of it because I know I'm not going to wear it very much because I have so many other hats that I don't wear. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this. Maybe some mitts. I don't know. It'll sit in my stash for a little bit and I'll figure it out at some point. So that is my only acquisition. Um, I was good. <laughs> I'm trying to be more more aware of, um, and the color of this is Graybow. I don't know if I mentioned that. Graybow number two, and it's fall, winter 2021. Okay, yeah. So I think it's gonna be a really fun knit. Some lady at the store was actually making a sweater out of this. Um, I know I would never wear a sweater, <laughs> so. I'm not, I wasn't going to buy that much yarn to make a sweater because I know we'd ever use it. Um, so yeah, so now I just got to figure out. I'm not sure what that was doing there. Maybe that was part of the yarn. <laughs> Some kind of 
sparkly bit. Anyway, so now I just gotta figure out what to do with this particular yarn. So that was my only acquisition. Um, I think I was mentioning this before, but I'm trying to be more like aware of what I'm buying, what I'm buying it for. I don't want it to sit in my stash forever. I never have a purpose for it. So I just bought one skein and I limited myself to that. So I was good. <laughs> And then I'll tell you, show you some of the stuff I took with me, but first let me show you my finished objects. So as I mentioned, I made a hat. So this is my raspberry beret that I told you I was gonna make for this year. And I haven't worn it because it got hot. And yeah, I think it's gonna be more of a, I'm not gonna put it on my head right now, but <laughs> cause it's just gonna create all kinds of havoc. But I think it's going to be more of a decorative hat than an actual keeping my head warm hat, which again, not something I do, but I had to have a raspberry beret, like I just did. So this was um, Knit Picks Swish in the Throne colorway. I had some leftover when I made my nieces some hats and, um, what did I make them? Some hats and cows, I made them for Christmas. So I had some leftover of this. So I think I used just one ball. Yeah, I don't think I got into the second one. Um, I forget who the designer is. I'm going to put it down in the description box. I'll put all of the information down there for all of the stuff that I'm, um, crafting on. And there is my raspberry beret. I used this pattern before to make Amelia a hat, which she has still not worn. <laughs> I think I'm going to put a pause on making my daughter knit stuff because she's just, she's going to turn 13 next month and she's just not wearing the stuff. Any, anymore, I guess. I don't know. She's going through a phase where she's not wearing any knitwear, which is fine. Maybe she'll come back to it when she's a little older, but I'm not going to be making her any stuff right now because she's not wearing it. So there is my raspberry beret. And then the other finished object I had was actually out of this yarn and I don't know where the tag is. I know it's pineapple yarn because I'm actually part of their um, monthly subscription club. And this was... I think it was sometime this year. I don't remember the color of this one, but it was one of her monthly yarns. And I made some socks. I think I showed you folks some of the progress on these socks at some point. These are for um, my husband's cousin for her birthday next month. And so I'm making her two pairs of socks. So this is the first pair, it's completely done. She wanted shorty socks. So I just did 15, 15, I think for the cuff, I did about 10 or 15, um, stockinettes. And then I put in a marker cause she says that the afterthought heels fit her really well. So I decided to make afterthought heels for these. And then I just made them the same size that my foot would be cause she has the same size as me. As you see, I haven't worn in the ends and that is because I am procrastinating on this because I have been having some issues with some of my socks coming undone in the wash that have had afterthought heels. So now I'm a little paranoid <laughs> that these are going to come apart because I know she's going to put them in the wash. I actually told her to put them in the wash. She's very much, you know, the easier, the better for her. She's not going to hand wash them. I'm not going to put that on anybody as a gift uh, unless they're a knitter and she's not. So I'm not going to like make her hand wash her socks. So I really am trying to figure out the best way to weave in these ends that it's gonna actually stick and not come undone in the wash. Um, I might even give her a little bit of extra yarn in case they do. I know she's a, she's crafty, so she's a quilter, um, but she's just not a knitter. So she'll figure out how to hopefully sew the, those back in. If not, I could always fix them for her, but I really don't want them to come apart in the wash. So that's why I'm kind of procrastinating on that there. But they are done, so I'm counting this as my um, March finished pair of socks. So now I moved on to the second pair of socks that I'm making for her. So this is another pineapple yarn. I think this was the December, and I actually have the tag in this one. The December color. This was called Peppermint Bark. So you can see all of those different speckles, and you'll kind of see it in sock form here. So I was able to get this done on the trip. Well, mostly done. I haven't done the heel yet, but I got up to the toe. I just had to actually kitchen the toe, but I made this one even a little bit shorter. So I have less of a space here. Actually the cuff is shorter. 
than the other one. So that's what that color looks like. I think I'm going to be making myself a pair of socks out of this. I know I'm going to have a lot extra because as you saw, I have all of this left from the last pair of socks. And these are going to be shorter, so I'm going to have plenty of yarn left over. So I have to finish the Kitchener here and then start the other sock. But it shouldn't, like, her birthday's late May, so I should be getting these done in no time at all. So that is the other pair of socks. And then I also took this one. I think this is going to be my April socks because it was A2. And I think I made Amelia a pair out of these because this is, I think, the second tube of this yarn. And this is a Chow Goo. Is it Chow? No, not Chow Goo. Ooh. Uh, Koi Goo is the name of the... Chow Goo are the needles. <laughs> and Koi Goo is the name of the yarn. And um, they usually just have a number. I think it's P35... P530025. And I think they're small batch. So I'm not sure if they repeat them. But that's what that is. And I had these cranked by um, Carrie from Freckled Whimsy. I sent them to her to crank them. And I did one cuff here, working on the second cuff. And then I'm going to basically split them in half and make uh, knit the toe, knit the cuff, knit the toe, knit the heel, sorry, and then be done with them. So I'm hoping I have three days left <laughs> of the month. I should probably get on that. I have three days left to be able to get this on, which I should be able to. I mean, they go quickly, but I'm on a streak. I got to keep it going. So I got to keep this out actually so I can work on them because I keep forgetting to work on these. These should be my April socks. And then I have one more thing that you've seen before. So this I've actually made a lot of progress on because I actually took this with me to Cincinnati when I went last month on spring break. And this is my half and half triangle wrap by Pearl Soho. Last time you saw it was actually down there. And since then I have made this much progress. So huge amount of progress. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar with the pattern, you actually do two triangles with short rows. Um, so I'm on still on the first triangle, the first color, and the other triangle is a different color. So this is ridiculous. I can't really show you, but you can see how much progress I've made. I made a ton of progress because the shorts, the short rows are getting shorter. <laughs> the space between them are getting shorter. So I'm getting um, to go back and forth a lot quicker. So I think I have, where am I? I'm right here in terms of the short rows. So you can see that I'm just going back and forth now here. Whereas all of this has been already completed. So this is Pearl Soho's Linen Quill in the Chestnut Red, I think it is. And I love this fabric. Um, and now I can see why everybody is kind of obsessed with it. <laughs> and keeps they keep making more and more of them. I think I already ordered some more yarn to make another one. Even though I haven't finished this one yet, that's fine. <laughs> But I just so much enjoy this. It's basically just stockinette and short rows is what it is. And I love it so much. Um, yeah, so I'm, I think I'm like, you know, Stacy from Stress Knits. <laughs> I'm always going to have one of my needles, I feel like. Because it's just a really, just the, the, the feel of the fabric on your hands and just the mindlessness of it. It's just very comforting. And now I totally get that because she kept saying that, you know, it's just something about this pattern and something about this yarn, the combination of the two. It's just really comforting and I don't know, it just makes you feel comforted and just relaxed and it's something about that. I can't describe it. <laughs> you just have to take my word for it. But yeah, so I've made a lot of progress on this. And then the other color is going to be like a bright flamingo pink. So that should be really fun. My other one I think is going to be a little bit more subdued. Although I'm kind of having second thoughts because I feel like I'm a bright person. I'm not a subdued person. <laughs> so we're going to think about that. I'm waiting for, because they have a sale every once in a while on this particular yarn on their website. So I kind of wait for those sales to come and then I order the yarn. So I think I might wait a little bit to kind of see if I can get a different color. Because right now I think it's too muted, the next one that I'm going to be making. But that's still a long way off, obviously, because I still have to make the other triangle there. And this is a new cast on. I took this one with me too. So this yarn has seen better days. This is like the fourth or fifth, sixth project now that I've tried to make with this yarn. And for some reason it just wasn't working out. I kept ripping it out, kept ripping it out, kept ripping it out. 
So this yarn, I should say, because it's a very special yarn, so I really wanted to showcase how special it is. This is the Fiber Company Road to China Light, and um, it's in the color Rotolite. Rotolite. <laughs> and what, what's so special about this yarn? It's only a 50 gram skein, and it's in sport weight, but it's alpaca, silk, camel, and cashmere. And it feels like really light and like a little baby bunny. I mean, it's just so soft. And the color is, this is like my favorite color right here, this color. And I've been trying to find something to use this with and everything that I would always try, it just wouldn't work out. Um, so I decided to put it together with this, which is Brooklyn Tweed's um, Puri. I guess that's how you say, Puri. And it's in the color Cobbler. And the puree is actually in a fingering white. So you can see these two colors. It's a very dark pinky purple. So I had a pattern in my stash called the Robina shawl. And it had been in my stash for ye like literal years. Years and years and years. And I just couldn't find the right combination of yarns to, um, to make. I think it was a free pattern when I downloaded it. This was on my, I'm not on Ravelry anymore, but this was like back when I used Ravelry. And that is not it. <laughs> um, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna show you. I don't know if it's free anymore. That's why I'm gonna hide the actual instructions. But I'm doing it on a US5, as you can see there. But basically it's stripes, and then it has like this lace section in the middle, and then it has more stripes. So that's what I'm doing, and I don't think I'm gonna have enough. It's only 50 grams of this, so I'm not gonna have enough of this, but I do have some um, Kiviet that I got from Alaska when we went a couple years ago, and it's pretty close to this color. It's a complementary color to this one, so I think I'm gonna use the Kiviet for the rest of the, when I run out of this one. And again, that'll be a really smooshy, beautiful shawl. So here it is. Here it is. And I love it. It is so soft. Oh, I guess I should say the Peary is, I think it's just 100% merino wool. Yeah, it's on the tag. 100% American merino wool. So this is just, I love this so much. It is beautiful. You can see the stripes. I don't know if you can see the halo. But even the halo is just, oh my gosh. It's so good. Yeah, you can't see it. <laughs> but trust me when I say that it is, fuzzy and oh my god it's so good like I put it on my neck it's just like a cloud a cloud um so this is how much I got done on the road trip from the marker up here and thank you thank you thank you to my beautiful friend who sent me this gorgeous stitch marker I'm always thinking about you I'm not gonna say your name but I'm always thinking about you and I always think about you and your family and I hope everybody's okay but I think these markers are fantastic um, they really just not only elevate the project for me, but they just made me think of like sweet friends and how much this podcast has brought me in terms of friendships and just these wonderful people that are now in my life because of this podcast. So I, I thank you for that. But yeah, so this is my project. And I made mistakes here because you're supposed to like slip the first stitch and I'm not always great about that. So there are some mistakes, but I don't care. <laughs> Nobody's going to look that closely to it. And I don't care and it's beautiful and I love it so much. It's so soft, it's so soft. So I gotta get back on that. And again, this is really easy. You just increase every other round, oh, every other round? Yeah, every other round you just increase on one side. That's why it's creating this kind of a uh, triangle shape here. Asymmetrical <laughs> triangle shape, there you go. That's what I was looking for. So I'm really excited to work on that some more, but I wanted to show that to you. And then I think I'll show you one more project since it's sitting here. So I wanted to make some mitts for myself for this winter. Obviously that did not happen because it is spring <laughs> and you know, getting closer to summer. So obviously these are not going to be for this year, but I'm making myself some mitts, some color work mitts. So I'm trying to be, my color work is always really wonky. I'm a really tight knitter and I, I go up sizes on, color work and they still turn out really tight so I'm I'm still I'm still working on it still working on it um these are the Markwam I think that's what they're called Markwam mitts um it's a 
Brooklyn tweed pattern as well. And this is Brooklyn tweed in the, is this shelter? I don't think this is shelter. Let's go grab a tag. No, this is Arbor. This is the DK weight. So the DK weight, um, Dorado is the dark color and then um, sea glass is the lighter, sea glassy color. <laughs> so this is what they look like now. I'm making a small, cause I have pretty small, pretty small hands. So that's what it looks like on the front. And then that's what it looks like on the back. So I've never actually made myself a pair of mitts. Um, I've made some fingerless mitts, but nothing that actually covered my fingers. That's why I'm making these cause my fingers are always cold. <laughs> But I really love how graphic that is turning out. And these are the colors that the pattern recommended. That's why I actually was, these are usually not my colors, like green and like a kind of a sea glassy green, like not my colors at all. But I was, I saw them in the pattern and I was like, okay, I love that combination. And I would have never picked the, these colors on my own. So here we go. So that is my Marquam, Marquam. <laughs> mitts in my um I bought this bag from Erin from the she must knit the she must knit podcast and I believe her shop is oh is it bling string I think it's bling string um I don't see it on here but I think that's what it is but they're adorable little manatees and that is it for now thank you so much for joining me I hope you are doing okay I hope you're um, doing the best you can with what you have, right? That's all we could ask for is to just be living our best lives possible at that moment. Because <laughs> that's kind of one of the things that I have I try to live by now is just kind of take each day as it comes. You know, um, I've always been a planner that I like to plan five years in advance. <laughs> but obviously that hasn't worked out for me. So <laughs> I have to be patient and kind of take life as it comes and um, work with what you have. So I hope you have a, a wonderful day, wonderful week, and I hope you're crafting. Um, why don't you tell me something that's bringing you happiness right now in the comments? Because I feel like I always need to hear some positivity because, you know, we're surrounded by negativity all the time. And, you know, it's just, it's been a rough couple of years for a lot of people. So why don't you tell me something that's bringing you joy right now? And it could be anything. I have, I'm, I'm, I'm very simple when it comes to what makes me happy. It could be like one of my plants getting a new leaf or the dog, you know, sleeping on the floor with her little tongue sticking out, like stuff like that. <laughs> Just tell me something happy. I will see you next time.